What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Java Talks. I'm your host, RJ Juvangula. And today's episode is going to be a little bit controversial. And for the most part, I've been avoiding controversial topics. We've talked about society's polarization. We've talked about personal things, about finding purpose, about my own perspective on my own life. But for the most part, I've never really gotten into topics that I think can make people angry because... For the longest part, we've been trying to establish the Java Talks, right? We've been trying to figure out what the Java Talks is even about. And I didn't want to come out here and just put out controversial topics that I think can make people uneasy or unhappy. But I think over this last week, as I've been on break from ASU, I've been watching TV, the news, um, some of my favorite comedians. And something's come up to my, my... my understanding and i think it's been bothering me for quite some time now and it's the idea of why some of these movements are failing or why i think they're failing so i was watching one of my favorite comedians bill burr um last night actually and he was on the conan o'brien show and he was talking about how he was watching the women's rally a few um years ago and he was talking about how he was watching it because his wife had it on. And he saw some people in the beginning come out and be vocal about it and be effective and be efficient during the rally and be empowering for the most part. And then it got turned into a lot of people starting to talk that were repeating themselves, that were using the the opportunity to capitalize off the moment. And then he starts talking about a bunch of movements where... The narrative gets spun so out of control and it gets so spun out of out of proportion that I think some people are turned off from the topic immediately. And I think when I was watching the Bill Burr videos and I was watching his him take I mean he's a comedian at the end of the day and he's going to be trying to make a joke out of it. But when I was watching him talk and I was watching him recollect on some of his emotions during that time. I started thinking about why some of these bigger movements, why these some of these, for the most part, well-composed arguments are failing or are being received negatively. And I think the biggest reason why things are failing is because people on on the side of the argument are making it way too extreme for people to like it. I think when you hear a rational argument or you hear an argument that is worth considering and worth listening to and worth debating back to even, they're not extreme. They're moderate. They take the the objective route. They make things factual. They make things seem reasonable. But when you talk to people on the same side of that argument, but way, way, way more extreme, you immediately get turned off. You immediately start to tune out what's going on. You immediately start to hate or even dislike the other side. And I think even more than people that disagree with the movement, I think people that are on the same side but make things way more extreme, way more radical than the the initial argument tries to make it, I think these are the people that try, that I don't think they try to, but I think they undermine the effort of the group, right? And this is where I think it's going to get a little bit controversial. So I'm sorry if you get sensitive. But with the Me Too movement, right, it started off really, really, really empowering. It it came from an idea of empowering women and even protecting them and giving them the the platform and the voice. And even to, it allowed men to come out and voice their concerns too. I I remember when Terry Crews came out and told us his story, it felt empowering, it felt considerate, it felt rational. But then it immediately got pushed into this extreme cancel culture kind of route and it demonized other people. It, it demonized people that wanted to support, but maybe had some kind of incident back in the day. It demonized people that wanted to help. And immediately the Me Too movement began to lose support. It began to turn into the hashtag Me Too jokes. And I think the people that made it extreme is the, the cause of that, uh, that undermining, that revaluation of what's going on. Um... Uh, I, I've been on Twitter recently, and I've been looking at the Georgia abortion uh, bills that they've been trying to pass or have passed, and 
I'm not on the side of abortion or abortion um, prevention laws. I think those are ridiculous to an extent. I think that people should be able to do what's in the best interest of themselves to an extent. But I think that when I look at Twitter and I look at people immediately calling out men um, who really have nothing to do with this, right? Immediately calling out men, saying men ain't shit, saying stuff like that. It demonizes an entire group. And it immediately loses support for the cause. And I get that we're trying to empower a, a certain group and we're trying to give them all the power in the world. But what's the point in demonizing other people? What's the point in making them think that their their support isn't necessary or their decisions aren't valid or their decisions aren't credible? And then I look at things like... um. I look at all these different arguments and I, I look at, and there's an immediate polarization where one side's right and one side's Im- extremely wrong. Not even like kind of wrong, but like extremely wrong. And I think that's why for all the people that are trying to create social change, I think the extremes of those social change are the reason we're not getting actual results. And I think that's why in the upcoming elections, whoever's going to be the most moderate is going to win. Because everyone's so sick and tired of the extremes just taking away the value, the credibility of anything. And I think for the largest part, right, and I think this is when I get back into my own personal experience. For the most part, I've been turned off by all of these different debates and these different arguments because the extremes dominate social media. The extremes dominate news platforms. They take away from the actual points that an argument's trying to make and make it into an emotional uh, demonizing, just toxic environment. And as someone who wants to help, it makes me, pushes me away. It takes away my ability to even provide help when I'm being demonized for simply being a man or simply having a certain point of view. And let me get, let me get this straight. I'm not trying to defend all men. I'm not trying to defend everyone on the other side of an argument. Because I do think that objectively, there are people that are wrong. There are people that are out of line. There are people um, who shouldn't be in decision-making processes. But that being said, what's the point in demonizing everyone, right? I mean, I remember the Ben Affleck thing where um, he came out in support of the Me Too movement and something happened in his past and he was immediately shut away. Um, He was immediately just shunned. And Maybe this was his opportunity to repent, to pay back for what he did. Maybe this was just an opportunity for him to show that he grew and that he learned. But he never got the opportunity. And I think that that's a shame, right? You need people from both sides to make any kind of um, long-term improvements, long-term success. I remember the Kevin Hart thing where he was about to host the Oscars or whatever it was. And old tweets came up from 10 years ago. They had to go back 10 years ago to find out anything dirty about Kevin Hart. And they pulled out those tweets and they used it against him, created this just toxic environment on social media. And eventually he came down and he didn't host the Oscars because they had to go back 10 years to demonize him, to make him the villain. And everyone bit on that. Everyone was quick to just jump on his on the other side and attack Kevin Hart. And I think that's just a shame. And I mean... <laughs> For the most part, I've been trying to avoid episodes like this where it can be misconstrued where I'm trying to defend men or I'm a, I'm an anti-sex or an anti-feminist or um, I don't believe in certain movements. And I think for the most part, I I didn't want to be labeled those kind of things because I, I'm not, right? But I think there's just been so much anger brewing in me for the last two, three years when people who are trying to help are immediately shunned and immediately polarized and and I have all these thoughts in my head, and I, I going back to that Bill Burr episode, like it it finally got to the breaking point where it makes me feel like I had to talk at least a little bit. And if this offended you, I'm sorry, but I do think that we need to start coming to this point where it's not an immediate vilification of other people, right? Where I think people are so quick to blame others. And I think that instead of trying to come together and create some kind of solution, we're immediately pointing fingers and driving each other further and further away from each other. And I think that that's, that's the, one of the root causes of what's creating this polarized state that America's in. 
I think America is so polarized that, quite frankly, the future is dark. And if the future is dark, then none of these solutions are going to get any better. We need to learn how to come together and not just immediately blame other people, immediately create conflict, immediately create the outgroup. We need to come together and create some kind of solution. And sure, that might suck for some people and that might be very difficult, but it's essential. And if we're not doing that, then we're going to fail. And I'd rather not see that. So thank you for listening to my soapbox rant on today's episode of the Java Talks. I'm your host, RJ Javangula. Make sure you guys follow us on all of our platforms. Stay tuned for more episodes. See you guys. Peace out.